Today we're going to continue our study of multiplying powers with the same base, and we're going to consider today um, that exponents can also be expressed as fractions. Fractional exponents are called rational exponents, so let's consider the idea of 9 to the 1 half power. Maybe you could take a guess as to what you think it might be, um, and if I were you, I would consider the fact that you know what 9 to the 0 is, and you know what 9 to the 1st is. So. Um, the other way I want you to kind of consider it is this. I'm trying to help you make some sense of it, is that now that you know your exponent rules, what would you say if I said, what is 9 to the half times 9 to the half? And here we have an expression where we're multiplying things in exponential form with like bases. So I'm hoping that you remember your rules enough to say that when we multiply like bases, we can add the exponents. Okay, so here we have this statement that tells me that, and the, the way I got the 1 is because, remember, you're going to add the 1 half and 1 half and 1 half plus 1 half is 1, and 9 to the first power is just 9. So here we have this statement that says 9 to the 1 half times 9 to the 1 half equals 9. And so if we look at that in terms of still wondering, well, what the heck is 9 to the 1 half? We're looking at this statement that says something times itself equals 9. So looking at it this way, can you figure out what 9 to the 1 half equals? Okay, and I'm hoping that you see that 9 to the 1 half power really equals 3. Okay, let's try that again. And um, no, just to kind of follow up, 9 to the 0 equals 1, and 9 to the 1st equals 9, so it stands to reason that 9 to the 1 half power would be somewhere in between there. Let's take a look at just one more example like that, and let's take a look at um, okay, let's take a look at 8 to the 1 half power. So um, in order to do this, I'm going to take a look and, and I'm going to ask myself, well, what does 8 to the 1 half times 8 to the 1 half equal? And if you use your exponent rules where you add the exponents of like bases, you get 8 to the 1 half plus 1 half and 1 half plus 1 half is just 1. And so you're looking at 8 to the 1 half times 8 to the 1 half is equal to 8 to the 1st. And so if we look at it this way, where I'm asking you, what number times itself equals 8? Okay, this one's not as intuitive. And so um, we kind of think about this one and we say, hmm, when we're doing this, you might think to yourself, well, let me reach for my calculator and I will take the square root of 8. And now maybe this reminds you then that the square root of 8 times the square root of 8 is in fact 8. And so we would say that 8 to the 1 half is the square root of 8. So um, that's one way of looking at it. So let's take a look at some problems that we can do together. So this one says, um, simplify the expression 81 to the 1 fourth power. Okay, kind of using the idea that I looked at before, I don't really know what 81 to the 1 fourth is right at this moment, but I do know that 81 to the 1 fourth times 81 to the 1 fourth times 81 to the 1 fourth times 81 to the 1 fourth Okay, if I multiply like bases, I can add up their exponents, and 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is equal to 1. So I'm looking at this from this perspective of saying, okay, what number times itself 4 times is equal to 81, right? Or what number to the fourth power equals 81? And so you just kind of have to think this one through. And this one's actually called the fourth root of 81. So you would look at it this way, the fourth root of 81, and it turns out that 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 equals 81. So we would say that 81 to the 1 fourth power is equal to 3. Okay, what I meant to do was that. All right, so what I'd like you to do is try these um, three expressions on your own, and let's see how you do. I'm going to copy them so you can see them. Maybe if you can't see them, they're kind of... Okay, so take a look at these and see if you can puzzle them through. Press pause now and let's see how you did. Okay, I got 2, 3, and 8 for mine. And so I hope you were able to get those answers too. And if not, you might want to take a look at some of the work that I wrote down here. And I was sort of like trying to puzzle it through um, in the way that we talked about before. Okay. Let's consider this one. You can also have um, an expression like 9 to the 3 halves. This is also considered a rational exponent. All right, and if you consider this one, 9 to the 3 halves, um, if we look at multiplying bases of 9, it looks to me like it would be 9 to the 1 half times 9 to the 1 half 
times 9 to the 1 half. Because remember, when you multiply like bases, you would add the exponents. And 1 half plus 1 half plus 1 half equals 3 halves. Okay, so um, if you know that, then you could say to yourself, all right, um, some number times some number times some number. And in this case, we happen to know the numbers because you know what 9 to the 1 half power really means, the square root of 9. What number times itself gives you 9. And so in this case, we have 3 times 3 times 3. So we can realize that 9 to the 3 halves power equals 27. It's basically like 9 to the 1 half and then that quantity cubed. 9 to the 1 half is 3, and then you cube that to get 27. Let's do some practice with that. Okay, so here's one we're going to do practice with. It's 64 to the 3 halves, and they're suggesting that the first thing you do is rewrite the expression. So I'm going to rewrite that using like bases, 64 to the 1 half times 64 to the 1 half times 64 to the 1 half. Okay, now you know what 64 to the 1 half is, so we can substitute in 8 times 8 times 8. Okay, and then you just simplify from there. So 8 times 8 is 64, and 64 times 8, I believe, is 512. Okay, so we know that 64 to the 3 halves power is 512. Okay, so I want you to practice using these three, and you can press pause um, before I reveal the answer to see how you're doing. I'm going to rewrite them so that you can see them. Okay, so give yourself a chance to copy these three problems down, try them on your own, press pause, and let's see how you did. Okay, you can see my answers for A and B, and hopefully you did well. Um, I also put my answer for C, but I kind of wanted to walk you through that one in case you're still feeling a little bit lost on this one. So if I were to rewrite 16 to the 3 fourths using powers of 16, it would be 16 to the 1 fourth times 16 to the 1 fourth times 16 to the 1 fourth. Okay, now what does 16 to the 1 fourth power mean? But what number times itself four times would give you 16? And so I know that that would be 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So I know each of these would be 2. So it's like finding the fourth root of 16, which is 2, and then cubing it to get my answer of 8. Okay, so for this last problem example that I'm going to do, we're going to try to put together what we just learned. All right, so in this problem where they're asking you to simplify this rather complex expression, um, what we want to do is follow um, order of operations. And actually what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the commutative and associative properties to reorder these things in an order that is pleasing to me. So I'll give you a second to copy this down as is. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move around the factors that you see here and we're going to put all the coefficients first. So that's a 2 times a 3 times a 5. Okay. Then I'm going to put all the A terms together. This is A to the 2 thirds times a to the one-third, then we're going to move the b factors together, b to the one-fourth times b to the one-half. All right, so we've got three little separate problems that we're going to do here. So 2 times 3 times 5 is obviously, hopefully, 30. All right, and a to the two-thirds times a to the one-third. Okay, when I'm multiplying like bases, I can add the exponents. So I get a to the three-thirds, and three-thirds, of course, is 1. Okay, and you don't need to leave the 1 on there, so it just becomes plain a. Yeah. All right. Then over here, I'm looking at b to the one fourth times b to the one half. So I get b to the one fourth plus one half. Okay. Now I want to simplify that, and one fourth plus one half I happen to know is three fourths. If you don't happen to know that, you can get common denominators by saying to yourself, one fourth is one fourth, and one half is equal to two fourths. And so you can add those together and get b to the three fourths power, and that's your answer. Thirty a b to the three-fourths. Okay, now remember, it's not okay to leave negative or zero powers, but it is okay to leave rational or fractional exponents. All right, I'm going to have you try um, four on your own right now. Okay, here they are in larger print if you couldn't read the original ones. So again, try to press pause now and try it as best you can on your own. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the answers. Okay, so here are the four answers that I got, that hopefully you got. Um, if you weren't able to get to these four answers on your own, I would really like you to stay and listen to my explanations. Um, if you got all four right, you can stop the video now. Um, or if perhaps maybe you got A, B, and C correct, but you're lost on D, you can maybe fast forward to where I start to explain D. 
Okay, so this is really just about reordering things. So it's 2 times 2 times c to the 3 fifths times c to the 1 fifth. All right, and the 2 times 2 gives me 4. And then this gives me c, and I'm going to add the exponent since I have like bases. And 3 fifths plus 1 fifth gives me 6 fifths. Or, um, excuse me, 4 fifths. I don't know where that came from. And that's my answer. Okay, let's go on to letter B. All right, letter B, there's really nothing to reorder. There's no coefficients here. And so it just becomes an N to the 1 third plus 4 thirds. And you would add the numerators and keep the denominators the same to count how many thirds do you have all together. And you have 5 thirds as your exponent. Okay, let's go on um, to letter C. Letter C is a little bit about reordering. So I'm going to look at B to the 2 thirds times B to the 4 ninths. And then times c to the 2 fifths times c to the 9 tenths. Now, um, the same thing goes in terms of I'm multiplying um, powers with like bases, but the exponents don't have common denominators. And if I'm going to add them, I kind of need to get common denominators. So 2 thirds, um, if I'm going to make that something ninths, I'm going to multiply by 3 by 3, and so it becomes 6 ninths. And so I would write that that way, and then my answer is going to be b to the something ninths, and it turns out that altogether I have 10 ninths. All right. Same deal on this right-hand one. I need common denominators, and the least common multiple of 5 and 10 would be tenths. And so 2 fifths becomes how many tenths? Well, if I multiply 5 times 2 to get 10, then 2 times 10, oh, excuse me, 2 times 2 is 4. So I'm going to change that 2 fifths into 4 tenths, and then it becomes easy to multiply those like bases and add the exponents, giving me c to the 13 tenths. Okay, last one to look at is this one. And again, it's really about reordering things. So we've got a 3 times a 7 and a 3 times a 7. All right, and then we've got a j to the 2 thirds times j to the 1 sixth. And then we've got an m to the 1 fourth and m to the 3 halves. All right, so we've got like three separate sort of problems this year. And here we've got like, you know, 9 times 49 or however you want to do it, um, 21 times 21, and you end up with 441. Um, okay, so then here we're in that same problem we were before. We're trying to multiply like bases, but we don't have common denominators here and here. So I'm going to change two thirds and I'm going to make that into four sixths. So now I'm going to say j to the four sixths plus one sixth is five sixths. And then here um, with the m's, again, I'm looking for common denominators. So I'm going to change this into fourths. So it becomes six fourths. So then I would say m to the one fourth plus six fourths is seven fourths. And that is my answer. All right. So hopefully you wrote down questions if you had them, and I'll see you in class tomorrow. Thanks.